namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa pay homage to the blessed one dear friends Today, June 1st, 2024, at Dhammasukha Meditation Center. So, I would like to deliver Dhamma talk from Majjhima Nikaya Sutta number 55, Jivaka Sutta. Sutta number 55, Jivaka Sutta. So, Jivaka was the Buddha's doctor. So whenever Buddha and his disciple they were sick and Jivaka did a treatment for them. And he also was very religious person actually during the Buddha's time. Sometimes he invited Buddha and his disciple at home for blessing, you know. So before Reading this sutta, I want to say one story, what happened. Especially, we can see in the world, there are some educated people who are really highly educated and who are not educated. So they think that I am the only educated guy and they look down the uneducated people. So during the Buddha's time, one disciple, his name is Sulla Pandaka. And there were there were two brothers actually. One is Mahapandaka and another one is the Sulla Pandaka. So Mahapandaka he always take care of the invitation. When somebody go to the monastery and invite the Sangha. So Mahapandaka always take care of that. And Sula Pandaka is not intelligent. So Mahapandaka told him, okay, I give you two line verse, you should memorize it. One month, two months, three months, four months gone, he couldn't memorize it because his memorization is very weak. And the Mahapandaka said, if you cannot memorize tonight, tomorrow, Jivaka invited us, Buddha and then all the Sangha from the monastery. So if you cannot memorize it, you cannot go there. You must leave the monastery. You cannot stay at the monastery. And in the morning, everybody ready for going the Jivaka's house. And Mahapandaka said to Chulla Pandaka, Did you memorize the verse what I give you? And he said, No. Okay, leave the monastery. Then Sula Pandaka, before leaving the monastery, he went to the Buddha's kuti, Buddha's cabin, and Buddha opened the door and he saw the Sula Pandaka. Hey Sula Pandaka, why did you come here? What happened? And Sula Pandaka said, Pante, I'm leaving the monastery. Why? What happened? You know, my older my older brother <coughs> gave me the one verse for memorizing. I couldn't memorize it. Even four months, I tried very hard. I couldn't memorize it. All the monks went to the Jivaka's house. The Buddha is the last one. The Buddha will go later. And Buddha said to the 
Sula Pandaka. I give you one handkerchief. That one is the white, a small handkerchief. So, okay. Sula Pandaka, I give you this handkerchief. You don't leave the monastery. You should wait until I come here. So, I give you one meditation. You just practice that. This is the white, white handkerchief, right? Yes. Okay. Left hand, right hand. Just put inside of your hands, two hands. Handkerchief is the white. You just say white, 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 white. This meditation for you. And then the Buddha went to the Jivaka's house. All the Sangha present and Sula Pandaka is practicing meditation very hard, you know, white, 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 white. After a few minutes, he saw this handkerchief became very soft, you know, and a little bit dirty. When the Buddha gave him, it was very clean, new handkerchief. But when he did white, 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 the handkerchief became very soft. And he was thinking, even this handkerchief became anicca, impermanence, not permanent. So impermanent thinking arose in his mind. So what is impermanent? That one is suffering. And the last one is impersonal. This is not me. This is not m my. So such a thinking arose in his mind, and he has started again. White, 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 white. And within short time, he attained Arahantship. Sula Bandaka. And Buddha used his psychic power. And he knew the monastery, Sulla Pandaka already ate in Arahanship. And he asked the monks, the Mahapandaka, Mahapandaka, all the monks already present here? Yes, Venerable Sir. I think one monk didn't come here, Sulla Pandaka. So Buddha said, Jivaka, Please go to the monastery. Sulla Pandak is there. You go there and invite him for coming to your home. And Jivaka went to the monastery. When he went to the monastery, he saw thousand, thousand, thousand monks. And he didn't know who is the Sulla Pandaka. And he came back again at his home. He said, Buddha, I don't know who is the Sula Pandaka. I saw thousand, thousand monks there. Okay, you go back again. And then when you see many, many monks, you touch one monk and tell him, Venerable Sir, I come here for inviting you at my home. So he went there. And he touched one monk, and all the thousand monks became one. Then he invited him at his home, and then Chula Panda went there. And Buddha said, O oh monks, in this wonderful ceremony, Chula Panda will deliver Dhamma talk today. And then other monk said, what? <laughs> that monk even couldn't memorize even two lines, two line verse. And how can he give the Dhamma talk today? Because they don't know. He had an Arahanship already. Only Buddha knew. 
and they are looking, you know, one to another. They are looking one to another. Because Buddha said, okay, everybody keep silent. He, I'm now, I would like to invite now Sula Pandaka to deliver Dhamma talk in this wonderful ceremony. Then Sula Pandaka sat and he started giving Dhamma talk. Beautiful Dhamma talk. Everybody were very surprised. How did he do that? And at the end of the Dhamma talk, the Buddha said, O oh monks, you should not look down others. Even though someone dull, you know, someone cannot memorize the words, you should not look down them. Do you know why he became dull monk in this life because in the past in the past life he was the educated one and he looked on others he think that I am the only educated one and other people are not intelligent like me so because of that karma in this human life, so he became dull, and even he couldn't memorize even one or two lines, first, you know. So this is the story uh, during the Buddha's times actually happened. That's why the Jivaka was actually very religious whenever any Buddhist monk had the problem that became sick and he went immediately there and he took care of them and he did the treatment for them. So when you go to the Myanmar, Thailand, I don't know about the Sri Lanka because I didn't go there. I studied in Myanmar and Thailand so I know about these two countries. In Myanmar, for the Sangha, for the monks, they have the hospital. We call Sangha Hospital. And in Thailand also, they have the hospital for the monks. You know, whenever monks have become the sick, they go to the Sangha Hospital. And they do the free treatment. That's far. Connection just died in and now it's you have to restart it somehow. Or the mic com hold it did the phone? <coughs> yeah, I mean I checked the uh, internet's connecting. It's just a bad connection. So now can you see now? You can Yeah, it looks uh, yeah, this is the new one. Just stopped. Sometimes happen. So, yeah, impermanence. I have, I have it all here, though. Yeah, we are talking the impermanence. That's right. Even technology is impermanence, right? Sometimes good, sometimes not good. Is it working now? The tripod. I got to replace this tripod. Better. So. That's why the monks, especially in Thailand, is it all right? Good. Okay, so in Myanmar and then Thailand, if somebody go to the Sangha hospital for the treatment, so what I saw in Thailand, there are many people go to the Sangha hospital for doing the generosity, 
you know, the monks are very sick, you know, the monk don't have that, any family. So the supporter is the family member. So they go and then they take uh, some material things and offer to the monks at the hospital, you know, and they take care very well. So in this sutta, the Blessed One explained, somebody complained about the Buddha. Someone killed an animal and offered the meat to the Buddha. Then somebody said that because you eat the meat, that's why somebody killed the animal for you and offered the meat, offered the meat for, for you. So you commit the offense. So they complain like that. When Jivaka heard that, and Jivaka went to the Buddha and he asked, So if somebody killed an animal and offered the meat to you, do you think you commit the offense? So such a questions that Jivaka asked the Buddha. And the Buddha start explain very in detail about the loving kindness, about the compassion and joy and equanimity. How a monk live at the monastery with loving kindness. Even though somebody blame them, so he doesn't commit any offense, but people said that, okay, that monk commit the offense. So that way, monk is not going to have offense, but people have offense. Because I didn't do anything. The people blame, people criticize about me. So that way, they did unwholesome action. This is the word blessed one said here. So, thus have I heard on one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in Mango Grove of Jivaka Komara Bassa. So Jivaka full name is Jivaka Kumara Bassa. Then the Jivaka Kumara Bassa went to the Blessed One and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and said to the Blessed One, Venerable Sir, I have heard this. There slaughter living beings for the recluse Gotama. The recluse Gotama knowingly eats meat prepared for him from animals killed for his sake. Venerable Sir, do those who speak thus say what has been said? by the Blessed One and not misrepresent him with what is contrary to fact? Do they explain in accordance with the Dhamma in such a way that nothing which provides a ground for censor can be legitimately deduced from their assertion? This is the question asked. Now, Blessed One is going to answer. Jivaka, those who speak thus do not say what has been said by me. I didn't say that, but people are saying. So, they're spreading the wrong word about me, what I didn't do. So, that's why. Those who speak thus do not say what has been said by me, but misrepresent me with what is untrue and contrary to fact. Jivaka, I said that there are three instances in which meat should not be eaten. What it is seen, what it is heard, or 
when it is seen, when it is heard, or when it is suspected. So when you see somebody is killing the animal for you, you see that you should not accept the meat. You should not accept that meat. When they, after cooking, they offer you, right? You cannot accept that. You cannot eat that meat. That's why he has said, when it is seen, heard, or suspected that the living being has been slaughtered for oneself, I said that meat should not be eaten in these three instances. So when you hear from some, okay, Buddha, somebody killed the animal for offering the meat to you, you cannot eat. If you see that, you cannot eat. If you suspect, you cannot eat. This is the monk's rule in this Sutta mansion. So, one is seen, another one is the heart, Another one is suspected. I say that there are three instances in which meat may be eaten. When it is not seen, you can eat. Not heard, you can eat. And not suspected, you can eat. That the living beings has been slaughtered for oneself. I say that meat may be eaten in these three instances. This become very clear, right? So, many people ask, actually, when we go outside from the other religion people, <coughs> because in Buddhism, the number one precept is killing. Number one, abstention from killing, number one, right? So, from other religion, people ask me, Hello, Venerable Sir. In Buddhism, said, abstention from killing, number one. So, do you eat meat? Yes. So, Buddha said, abstention from killing. But why do you eat, eat why do you take the meat? So we answer to them. Somebody went to the supermarket and they bought the meat. And after buying meat, they cook and offer to us. So in that case, we don't have any offense. Right? So whatever people offer to us, we have to accept. So if the people offer the vegetable, vegetarian or vegetable, we accept the vegetable. So that way, what is the problem? So we explain to them and you know, they misunderstand. So here, now Buddha is going to talk about how a monk lives with the loving kindness at the monastery. Here Jivaka, some monk lives in dependence upon a certain village or town. He avoids forbidding one quarter with a mind in with a loving kindness. Can anybody answer one quarter means what? Yes, forward. Forward. Yes, here radiation here the most of the meditators are advanced. So when I took the interview today, then I understood most of them are advanced meditator. So that's why we were talking actually with the sister Kristen and David. From tomorrow, I want to take the interview from all of you in the morning. Because I want you to sit after lunch, long sitting from 1.30 to 5.30. So that way you can practice, you'll have enough time to meditate, you know. So everybody go down except 
Damananda. Damananda have a little bit problem in his leg. So I will take interview from him after breakfast, the dining hall. And so when you finish the breakfast, and you can do your daily daily activities, and after that you can go down. Because most of you advanced students, say advanced meditators. So you, I know you don't have a lot of questions. Maybe some of them have. I can cover from nine to eleven. Will not be a problem. So after lunch, please take nap for fifteen or thirty minutes, and then you come to meditate here before one thirty. So that way you can before sitting drink water, whatever your stomach need. But don't drink too much. So after drinking water, then you can sit two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever you want to sit. But if you think that, if you if you think that, what happened? What happened? Hello? Yeah. I think microphone also sleeping sometimes. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So if you think that okay, I come to Dhammasuka Meditation Center for practicing meditation. So I don't want to waste my time. I finish the lunch and I'll go to meditation hall and practice meditation. See if he's so sleepy. Sleepiness and dullness will arise in your mind, you know. So that's why after lunch, please take nap, 30 minutes or 15 minutes. So that way, you'll be free and then after coming here, believe me, you can see four hours with a, with a movie. Four hours and your meditation will be very good. So exactly nine o'clock, except Dhammananda, please go down everyone. And I want to see all the, everyone and the important questions, whatever you have questions, you make note and then you can ask me. And then I will ask you questions, then done. Right? So after lunch you can practice longer. So the Buddha said, the monks who are living in the, uh, in the village, a certain village or town, they always try to stay with a loving kindness. And that one is Buddha is going to explain to the Jivaka. Here Jivaka, some monks, lives in depend dependence upon a certain village or town. He avoids perverting one quarter with a mind imbued with loving kindness. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above, below, around and everywhere, and to all as to himself. He avoids pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind in with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. Then a householder or a householder's son comes to him and invites him for the next day meals. The monk ex accepts if he likes. When the night is ended in the morning, he dresses and takes in his bowl and outer robe and goes to the house of that householder or householder's son and 
sits down on a seat made ready. The, then the householder and the householder's son serves him with a good arm's food. He doesn't think how good that the householder or householder's son serves me with a good arm's food. If only house, a householder or householder's son might serve me with such a good arm's food in the future, he does not think thus. He eats that arm's food without being tired to it, infatuated with it, and utterly committed to it, seeing the danger in it and under understanding the escape from it. What do you think, Jivaka? Would that monk on such an occasion choose for his own affliction or for another another's affliction or for the affliction of both? No, Venerable Sir. Does not that monk sustain himself with the blameless food on that occasion? Yes, Venerable Sir. So, you are giving the good food, you are offering the good food to the monks and that food is very delicious. So, a monk think that, oh, today sister, sister and David and then Jew, 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 right? Jane, Jane, Jane offer the very delicious food. So, they should offer the delicious food tomorrow also. So, if monk think that, you know, this is unwholesome, right? So, the monk who really practice loving kindness, they never think that way. Whatever I receive today is enough. And tomorrow is tomorrow. They just think today. So that's why I said this morning to the some the few meditators. Whatever they have experienced in the past, and if you think, okay, this meditation I want to get it, you'll never get it. What experience you got in the past, if you think I want to experience this retreat, you'll never get it. Same things never come. Every moment you'll experience new things. Every moment. This is meditation. If you think that, oh, the last retreat with the Dalson, with the David, I experience beautiful, you know, I want to get it now. This is one sort of craving. Right? You'll never get it. So that's why I said, okay, you think right now what you are doing now. So that's why Buddha said, don't think past. Don't think future. Think right now what you are doing. So that way you can be free from suffering. You know? So, in New York, the some, the, sometimes, you know, many, m many people come to me. He said, you know, I have a lot of depressions. I, I have the, I, I am the broke up with the girlfriend and when I have the, some problem, you know. So, I want to meditate. How can I overcome all those things? I have the, re I don't have the remote, you know, <laughs> I don't have anything to control. <laughs> I told them, okay, well, you can come here, you have to listen to me, and I am going to give, uh, give you the, some instructions, then if you practice that, you will be free from depression, definitely. One guy came at my center, so he's very young, so he drink a lot, you know, 
and he's the very angry person. So when he came to my center, what is going on? Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of it comes and goes. I, I have to replace the battery. Is it a battery problem, right? It's a battery problem. Okay. So he said, "Hello, Bante." Yes, I am fine. You know, I want to meditate here. Okay, that's fine. So why why do you want to meditate? He said, you know, whenever somebody speak with me at my home, any relatives, I feel immediately angry. Angry arise in my mind. I cannot control, and I drink a lot. So, and I ask him, "Do you drink now?" He said, "Now I stop." Okay. So, when you meditate here, you have some discipline rule. So you have to maintain that. You have to keep the five precept. Can you keep it? Abstention from killing. Abstention from taking what is not given. Abstention from adultery, abstention from telling lies, abstention from drinking alcohol. Can you ex can you observe it? Can you accept that? Okay, I can do it. Okay, if so, please practice loving kindness meditation. And he did. And after that, and I told him, okay, when you go back at home, whatever you practice here, loving kindness. Please practice at home. Wake up early morning, and then practice at least one hour. He practiced that, and he got a benefit. And he came to me, Bhante. I am coming here every week, every Friday, because this meditation helped me a lot. And I told him, when you become angry, do you suffer? Think about it. Are you a miserable person? Who is going? Who is going to anger you? You are the one, right? Yes. So, because of not understanding, anger is arising in my mind. So, if you say, "Okay, hey, anger, you should stay there. You should not fade away." But you know, after a few minutes, maybe after ten minutes, fifteen minutes, anger fades away. Right. So when anger arises in my mind, then I suffer myself. You can see in your brain, it's like burning. You see, when you see the inside, then everything is burning, burning. Burning, so that's why Buddha said, "Greed is the fire. Hatred is the fire, and delusion is the fire." What did he say that? When greed arises, too much greed. Some people they cannot control themselves. You know, when they lose something. Because they are too much attached about their property, about their money, about other things, and some of them, you know, got a stroke, heart attack, pass away. And when too much hatred rise, anger rise, you see their face. Their face look like very, how to say, ugly. You know. So their face look like everywhere red. You can see that they suffer a lot. So that's why the Buddha said, "Greed is fire, hatred is fire." So do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Whenever any anger arises, you should not show them. Just try to be calm. And then, if I become angry person, I am the one who's who's suffering. So, if somebody angry with you, 
you should not take that angry to you. Because if you take that angry to you, then you will be the miserable one. Then he said, yeah, I understand that. And then he practiced meditation according to my instructions and eventually he got it. And whenever he came, came to my center and he said, yeah, Bhante, this meditation is really work. You know, I understand whatever you said. So I practice almost every day in the morning. You know, I got the result. Thank you very much, Bhante. Thank you. So that's why if you know how to practice the loving kindness, the Buddha never say, okay, you radiate loving kindness to yourself and then to your spiritual friend. He, most of the suttas, he mentioned six direction. When you read the sutta, you will see he explained the six direction. So many well-known teacher, they said, you radiate loving kindness to yourself first. Because if you cannot love yourself, how can you love other? You cannot love other people, other, you know, other living beings. So you have to love yourself first. That's why you radiate loving kindness to yourself 10 minutes. And when you feel that your radiation is going very well, you feel that, you experience that. And then you choose a spiritual friend who is really your best friend, no any family member. So when you attend the fourth jhana, then you can radiate loving kindness to your family member, to your dad, to your son, to your daughter, to your mom. You know, one by one, you can radiate loving kindness to them. So that will be, your loving kindness will be very powerful, you know. So at the beginning, if you radiate loving kindness to your family member, because you love too much your family members, craving, attachment, so your meditation would not go very well, because you are too attached with your family members, right? Oh, this is my son, this is my daughter, this is my mom, this is my father. So that's why at the beginning, no family member. When you attend first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana, then you can radiate loving kindness family members. Right? So here, Venerable Jivaka, sorry, Jivaka said, No, Venerable Sir. Does not that monk sustain himself with the blameless food on that occasion? Yes, Venerable Sir. I have heard this, Venerable Sir. Brahma abides in loving kindness. Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is my visible witness to that. For the Blessed One abides in loving kindness. Jivaka, any lust, any hate, any delusion whereby ill will might rise have been abandoned by the Tathagata, cut off at the root, made like a palm stump, done away with, so that they are no longer subject to fears arising. If what do you said refer to that, then I allow it to you, Venerable Sir. What I said referred to precisely that. You see, the Buddha said himself, I abandoned lust, I abandoned hate, I abandoned delusion. So lust you understand, hate you understand, and what is the meaning of the delusion? Can somebody answer please? Delusion. Self. Delusion means one who doesn't understand four noble truths. Dukkha, suffering, 
Samudaya, origin of suffering, Niruda, cessation of suffering, Magga, the path that leads to the cessation of suffering, that means eight four noble path. So when you understand these four noble truths, wisdom arise. No, delusion in the sutta you will find in the Majjhima Nikaya. If you read that, most of the sutta, Buddha explained delusion means one who doesn't understand four noble truths. So, if you don't understand four noble truths, that means you have delusion. So, when you understand the four noble truths, dukkha, suffering, samudaya is the origin of suffering, niruda. The cessation of suffering, magga, that leads to the cessation of suffering, you understand these four noble truths very well, wisdom arises. You destroy that illusion. So, Buddha said, I abandoned lust, I abandoned hate, I abandoned delusion. So, I became enlightenment, I became Buddha. So Buddha always advised the monks, O oh monks, please try to abandon lust, hate and delusion. So that way, like me, all of you attain arahanship. So our goal is to attain arahanship. So this morning, uh, this afternoon, right? Did I take interview afternoon or morning? Afternoon. afternoon. He asked me. What is the purpose to become monk? This is the good question. During the Buddha's times, most of the monks, they went to the Blessed One and listened Dhamma talk from him. And then after listening only one time Dhamma talk, they said, Venerable Sir, your Dhamma talk was beautiful. I understood precisely, very clearly, so I want to become monk. Because Buddha explained how to liberate. Then he or she understood. I want to become bhikkhu, full ordination. I want to become bhikkhuni, please ordain me. And Buddha said, Ehi pasiko, come, O monks, come in the sasana and then ropes, outer rope, upper rope, lower rope, <coughs> present in front of them. How? Because in the past life, those monks, those, those people, they offer a lot of Atta Parikkara. We say Atta Parikkara means eight things. Outer rope, upper rope, lower rope, arms ball, belt, and needle, as, and then something you know for, for uh, some one. I don't know how to say that. Water strain. Yeah, water strain exactly. That one. There are eight things we call eight things there, uh, which is really need for the for becoming monk they offer to the Sangha in the past life. Mm. And because of that great merit, and when Buddha said, O oh, monks come in the sasana, and they automatically become Buddhist monk, and rope present, arms was there. And they, they didn't go to the Shima Hall, they become Buddhist monk. You see? And after becoming monk, Buddha, in a start, Buddha taught them, okay, now whatever I am giving you in instructions, so you go to the, under the tree, where I have the comfortable place for you, meditate. Most of the monks went to the, under the tree and then practice meditation. 
Udin Shvatan Devika Sotapanna Sakalagami Anagami Araha You know? To some people ask me in New York, Mante, when you give the Dhamma talk, during the Buddhist times many people attain Sotapanna, Sri Mantra, Sakalagami, once returner, Anagami, non returner, and Arahan, highest beast. Is it possible in this very life? Why not? If you follow his instruction, if you keep the precept. So first he said, Dana, giving generosity. So Dana means you give something, don't expect something. This is called Dana. In Pali, Daya Titi Danang. That means whatever I offer to you, I am not expecting something from there. Not give and take. I give something and I feel happy. So that way I gain a lot of merit. So when I was in Thailand, I woke, I woke up actually at 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock I went for arms round. And I saw the people, you know, all the Thai people, they are waiting for the monks. When even the dark outside, very dark, you know. So they, they have the food, rice and curry for offering to the monks. So I went there and they said, Nimon Ka, Nimon Ka, especially who are women, they said Nimon Ka, and who are men, Nimon Ka. That means they, are, they invite you. You have to go there. If you don't go, then ah, oh, why is not coming? I invited him. He's not coming to receive my food. <laughs> they will not feel good. <laughs> so we went there and accept the food. And after offering the food, you have to bless them. Like today, Jim, and then. See, uh, Krista and then David De and Greg. I never forget Greg name because I, I am uh, familiar with the Greg name, you know. So they offer the food and we bless them. Sabbe diyo vibhajanto so guru ko vinasato mate bhavatu antarayo. Suki te wa hoko bava abiva dana si lesa ni changuta pachayino chataro damava dante ayu vano sukang balang bhavatu sabamangalang rakantu sabade watang sabba buddha nu bhave na sada sukhi bhavantu te bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata sabba dhamma nu bhave na sada sukhi bhavantu te bhavatu sabba mangalang rakkantu sabba devata sabba sangha nu bhave na Sada Sukhi Pavantu Te. Then they say Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. After that, they will leave. They never look back because they will think, okay, my job is done. They never expect anything what they offer to the monks. Just monk bless them, that's all. You know? So that's why Dhaya Titi Dhanang means whatever you offer, you should not expect back something from them. So that, that way your generosity is not pure. So here the Buddha said, the way I practice, you should practice also. 
Everybody can attain Nibbana. So our main goal is to attain Nibbana. When you attain Arahanship, you attain Nibbana. Right? So there are two kinds of Nibbana according to the Buddhist scripture. We were talking with the Upekka, your name is Upekka, Upekkananda, right? Upekkananda. One is the Saupadisesa Nibbana, another one is the Anupadisesa Nibbana. So when you attain Arahanship in this very life, you are still alive. So you enjoy Saupadisesa Nibbana. Saupadisa Nibbana happiness. When you passed away, you still have happiness. You enjoy Anupa, this is, this is a Nibbana happiness. This is according to the scripture. You know? So, you are alive, Saupadisa is a Nibbana. Greed never arises in your mind. Hatred never arises in your mind, delusion never arises in your mind, you only enjoy happiness. Saupadis is a Nibbana happiness all the time. You know, and when you pass away and you you'll have the happiness, that one is Anupadis is a Nibbana, Nibbanic happiness. So, but the Blessed One said here, O monks, I abandoned lust, hate and delusion. Please, you also can do that. So, if what he said referred to that, then I allow it to you, Venerable Sir. What I said referred to precisely that. So, the most important here, you know the five hindrances. So I asked actually this morning and afternoon from all of you what is the five hindrances and what is the six source. What did I ask you? Five hindrances you keep one side. You know one, two, three, four, five. Five hindrances, right? Sensual desire, aversion, sleepiness and dullness, restlessness, anxiety and doubt. Another side, six hours, right? Recognize it, release it, relax tension and tightness and then re-smiling, returning, repeat, right? When sensual desire arises, recognize, release, relax, tension and tightness and the real smile, return, repeat, right? Aversion arise, again, recognize it, release it, relax, tension and tightness and the real smiling, returning, repeat, okay, two gone, right? And three, number three is sleepiness and dullness, again, recognize, release, relax, tension and tightness and real smile, return, repeat. Then another one, restlessness and then, okay, sleepiness and dullness. I don't know, maybe somebody not clear yet. Sleepiness means you feel sleepy. You meditate, maybe 30 minutes, you feel sleepy. This is sleepiness. Dullness. I determined to sit actually one hour, but I feel so sleepy. I should not practice one hour, maybe afternoon, not now. Dullness. Okay? And then restlessness, and restlessness means your mind go here and there, running everywhere. Anxiety. I am practicing loving kindness, the object of loving kindness, you know. But I want to keep my mind into one place with the loving kindness. But my mind, mind never listen to me. It's going here and there. Right? Why I cannot keep one place? Anxiety. And then doubt. 
what I am practicing now, maybe this is not the right way. What Bhante is saying, this is not the right path. What Buddha is saying here on the scripture, Majjima, Pade, Majjima Nikaya, maybe this is not true. Doubt may arise. Use the scriptures. You know? So that way you'll see the all the hindrances will be weaker, weaker, weaker one day. New hindrances arising. Maybe hindrances not rise in 10 minutes. Hindrances not rise in 15 minutes. Hindrances not rise in 20 minutes. Some people, you know, even 20 minutes, hindrances never arise, but they are in the jhana. You know? So you have to practice that way. And if you think that, Bhante, you know, I am practicing meditation, and because of hindrances, I cannot practice well. When hindrances will be a stop? I don't know. If you ask me <laughs> that, I cannot answer. <laughs> so, hindrances will, will be a stop one day when you attain arahanship. When you attain arahanship, then hindrances stop rising. Never rise. Otherwise, come and go. Come and go. Come and go. So, you have the key already. That's why I said one side hindrances. Another side, sixers, right? So that way, you know this technique very easy for you. So that way, you can progress your meditation very well, right? So here, Jivaka among lives in dependence upon a certain village or town. He avoids perverting one quarter with a mind imbued with compassion. So the first one I. He explained about the loving kindness. So, if you know how to practice loving kindness, compassion is very easy. So, what is the difference between loving kindness and compassion? So, when you practice the sixth direction forward, backward, left side, right side, above, below, and all directions. So, your meditation will change from the loving kindness to the compassion. So that times you will experience your mind will be more and more soft like cotton. And if you see two hours, three hours, four hours, sometimes you will see the tears is falling down. And then you pull, you will not feel that you don't have any body. You don't have body actually that time, because that that stage, the base of infinite space, is arupa. Only mind. So you'll have one sort of happiness that that moment. You know, if it's so light, and your mind will be more soft. This is the characteristic of the compassion. So you have to radiate. The all, six direction, all, all direction compassion. Karuna. Who is Karuna Nanda? <laughs> so, Karuna Nanda, that's why he's listening very manually. <laughs> right. Okay, the next one. When you know how to radiate loving kind in six direction, compassion is easy. And then, next one is joy. But when you read the sutta, most of the sutta you'll see altruistic joy altruistic joy but we don't use the here altruistic joy what is the different altruistic joy and a joy okay for instance david he succeed uh, he for example he got a award or maybe from someone you know and he came to me and said, Bhante, you know, I got very beautiful award today. And I feel very happy. Wow, great. This is artistic joy. Somebody succeed and then he told me and I feel very happy. And joy arose in my mind. This is artistic joy. But in the meditation is different. In the meditation, 
So when you radiating the compassion the six directions and from the compassion your meditation will change to the base of infinite space in consciousness and that stage you will see this series of the consciousness you will see that you know but when you see the link, the series of the consciousness is rising, passing away, rising, passing away, rising, passing away, you know, don't enjoy it, okay? Don't be attached on it. Just use the six years. When your mind is very sharp, you see the link of dependent origination, tiny link of dependent origination there. So that moment, just use the six years. I didn't say to arise like this, but in your mind, you'll see, wow, how consciousness is rising, passing away, rising is passing away, arising is passing away. It's, everything is impermanent. And then passing away. So if you say, okay, still there, no. It will rise and passing away. Rising, passing away. And in your mind, uplifted joy arises. This is the characteristic of the joy. That's why we use joy. Don't use the altruistic joy. Okay? So, through the insight, you can see that. From the outside, of course, you can say altruistic joy, no problem. But Buddha, most of the time, in, in his sutta, he explained insight through the medita meditation, you know. So, writes David, one who translated the, the first, at first, Tipitaka, Buddhist scripture. So, he couldn't find exactly what is the meaning of the Dhamma in English. Somebody said Dhamma means truth. Someone said Dhamma means doctrine. Someone said Dhamma means Dhamma. Because you cannot find that in exactly English. You see? So that's why the most of the uh, the uh, scholar they explain, okay, this, this one may be altruistic joy. I also use that word before coming here because I didn't understand, you know. So later on I understood that the Buddha whatever explained in the Sutta all the time he talk about inside meditation all the time about meditation there are many many sutta you'll find the middle land the, the diga nikaya majjhima nikaya sanyutta nikaya angutra nikaya all the suttas you'll find buddha talk about meditation 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 So, he always compared with him. He said, okay, what I am doing, you also can do that. Everybody can attain Nibbana. That's why Ehi Pasiku come and see, he invited everyone. Even in this very life, the Buddha said, if you follow my instruction, if you keep the precept and practice meditation, you will definitely attain Nibbana. No doubt. The Buddha never said, okay, after maybe 250 years and even though people practice Buddhism, people practice meditation, they will not attain Nibbana. 
He didn't say that. When Sangha, Sangha are present, Dhamma is exit, exit. Dhamma also present. And then people can practice that. And they can attain Nibbana. But when you attain any attainment, please don't proud. I have now jhana, I have now this attainment, I have now that attainment. Don't share to others who never practice meditation. Because they will not understand what you are talking about. There are some people who never keep the precept. They break up the precept all the time. So if you tell them, hey, I went to Dhammasukha and I got the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, the base of infinite space, compassion, the base of uh, infinite consciousness, the joy, the base of nothingness, equanimity, upekha, the base of neither perception nor non perception and cessation occur, and I got sotapanna. And they say, What are you talking about? Because he doesn't know anything. He didn't understand what you were talking about. <laughs> right? So, your attainment, your secret things. Keep in your mind. You can talk about, you can discuss with your teacher, but not with anyone. Even here, you should not share to anyone whatever you have attainment. So that way, your meditation will progress very well. Right? So, now, you understand the joy and the last one is with a mind imbued with equanimity like with the second like with the third like with the fourth so above below around and everywhere and to all as to himself he avoids perverting the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with equanimity abandoned exalted immeasurable with a hostility and without ill then a householder or a householder's son come to him and in, invites him for the next day meals. The monk accepts if he likes. What do you think, Jivaka? Would that monk on such an occasion choose for his own affliction or for others' affliction or for the affliction of both? No, Venerable Sir. Does not that monk sustain himself with the blameless food on that occasion? Yes, Venerable Sir. I have heard this, Venerable Sir. Brahma abides in equanimity. Venerable Sir, the Blessed One is my visible witness to that. For the Blessed One abides in equanimity. Before I heard that, now I saw practically. The, the Buddhist monks and the Brahma, that means who are Buddhist monk, you know, the Buddha and his disciples, they really have loving kindness. They really have compassion. They really have the joy. And they really have equanimity. I saw now at present. Jivaka. Any lust, any hate, any delusion, whereby cruelty or discontent or aversion might arise, have been abandoned by the Tathagata. So here Tathagata means Buddha, he always say himself, Tathagata said this. Tathagata is giving the Dhamma talk right now. He never say, Okay, Buddha, Buddha is giving the Dhamma talk right now. He never said like that. He indicated himself, Tathagata is giving the Dhamma talk now. Ananda, Tathagata abandoned lust, abandoned hatred, abandoned delusion. You also can do that. 
what Tathagata is doing, you also can follow that. So he always said Tathagata, Tathagata, you know. Cut off at the root and make mate like a palm stem, dant away with, so that they are no longer subject to fish arising. So greed never arise in his mind in the future. Hate never arise in his mind in the future. Delusion never arise in his mind in the future. If what you said refer to that, then I allow it to you. Venerable Sir, what I said referred to precisely that. So now you understand loving kindness, compassion, joy and equanimity. So the end of the sutta, the Buddha is going to talk about if somebody said, okay, Because of the Buddha, the people are killing the living beings. If you say that way, you did a lot of unwholesome. So now Buddha is going to talk about here. If someone slaughters a living beings for the Tathagata or his disciples, he lays up much demerit in five instances. Number one. When he says, go and fetch that living being, this is the first instance in which he lays up much demerit, number one. Is it clear? He said, when he says, go and fetch that living being, okay, go and then bring that living being here. Why are you? You, you give in the order to bring the animal for killing, you know. So that way also you have much demerit. When that living being experiences pain and grief on being let alone with a neck halter, this is the second instance in which he lays up much demerit. When he says go and slaughter that living being, this is the third instance in which he lays up much demerit. And the next one, when that living being experiences pain and grief on being slaughtered, this is the fourth instance, instance in which he lays up much demerit. When he provides the Tathagata or his disciple with food, that is not permi permissible, that, mean, that, that, that means no par ha, don't have permission, right? But you still offer that food to the monks. This is the fifth instance in which he lays up much demerit. Anyone who slaughters a living being for the Tathagata or his disciples lays up much demerit in these five instances. So the end of the sutta, the Buddha said, when this was said, Jivaka Kumara Bassa said to the Blessed One, it is wonderful, Venerable Sir, it is marvelous. The monks sustain themselves with permissible food. The monks sustain themselves with the blameless food. Magnificent, venerable sir. Magnificent, venerable sir. From today, let the blessed one remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for refuge for life. He was very, very happy after listening his Buddha's Dhamma talk. So, According to the discipline rule, we cannot accept 10 kinds of meat. Human, human meat, human meat, we cannot accept that. And then snake, and then tiger, and there are 10 kinds of meat actually we cannot accept. 
So if when you read, uh, when you go to the Google, you'll see that there are ten kinds of meat. We as a monk, as a samanara, we cannot accept from the lay people. We cannot eat, actually. So snake is a danger, right? How can you eat a snake meat? <laughs> and then human being meat, you cannot eat it. So Buddha prohibited ten kinds of meat you should not eat, you should not accept. Maybe one day I'll I I'll talk I'll explain the what are the ten kinds of meat, okay? So that will be very clear to you. So this is the sutta for tonight. Jivaka sutta not too long. And maybe tomorrow, um, because I understood today after taking interview, I think tomorrow uh, I'm going to talk about uh, sutta number ten or maybe sutta number forty-eight. Sutta number ten is the Satipatthana sutta, the four foundation of mindfulness. So maybe tomorrow I'll talk that sutta or maybe Kusambiya sutta. So if somebody attain Sudapanna, you'll have seven knowledges. And you'll understand yourself you attain already Sudapanna. Because that seven knowledges, if you understand step by step, one by one, you are the path of the fruition. You'll understand yourself. You know, okay, read number one, I have it. Number two, I have it. Number four, I have it. Seven knowledges. When you have it, you practice meditation, you have all the seven knowledges, you are the Sutapanna, the path of Istrimantra. Sorry, the fruition of Istrimantra. That one is the Kusambiya Sutta, Sutta number 48. So tomorrow, I think, uh, for to be more mindful, I think I'm going to talk about the Satipatthana Sutta, Sutta number ten, and then next there will be Kusambiya Sutta. Then you you'll be the Sutta Pana very soon, right? You'll understand yourself. Okay, now I got it. That's why. I want you to meditate from 1.30 to 5.30, once in four hours, right? <laughs> so take the interview in the morning from everyone so that you can practice and you have enough time, you know, 1.30 to 5.30. So that way you can, at least you can get something from here. Because most of you advanced meditators. I feel so happy when I was talking with you, you know. So that way I also feel light when I talk with the advanced meditator, you know. So it doesn't mean that I just uh, look down the who are beginner. Don't think that way. We uh, start from the beginning, right? So when from the beginning when you understand you radiate loving kindness to yourself, to your spiritual friend, to the loving kindness. You attain first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana. And when you're feeling, you know, from the center of your chest to go to the top of your head, then you advance meditator, you start radiating loving kindness the sixth direction. Most of the sutta already Buddha mentioned that. Then you advance, and from there, you meditation. Very faster you will progress step by step. Some people, you know, jump from the fourth jhana to the, the base of infinite space, the base of infinite consciousness, the base of nothingness, the base of neither perception, non perception, non, non perceptions, and then maybe cessation will occur very immediately, you know. So then you will get it. All right. Everything in the sutta. This is not my instruction. This is the Buddha's instructions. You know? So that's why I always try to uh, take a look at from the book. 
when I came here 2016 right David I came here 2016 and I asked a lot of questions from the Bhante you know and he explained me explained this way that way and I told him whatever you are saying I am not going to believe it you have to give me reference from the sutta otherwise I I am not going to accept whatever you are saying he said okay that's fine okay go back to your cabin I couldn't memorize the sutta name but I know the sutta number he said my memorization is no good but I can memorize number not the name okay tell me name the number and he said okay sutta number this section number that you go to your cabin and then take a look at the book then tomorrow you can tell me so whatever he said is true I went to my cabin after finishing meditation here at 10 o'clock and I went from 10 to 11 one hour what he delivered Dhamma talk here I went to my cabin and then I started reading that he's right then I accepted what he said and he said I know with that reference you never believe me and I told him why I am going to believe you the Buddha said there is no belief in Buddhism why I have to believe you <laughs> he said okay that's fine it's okay so that's why you know don't believe me what I am saying I am seeing everything from the sutta, from my experience. So when you experience yourself, you get the truth, please you accept it. That will be very helpful for you. Don't believe what the Buddha said. Don't believe what the you teacher said. You know, Buddha said to the Kalama, oh Kalama, don't believe me don't believe what you hear from others don't believe what in the scriptures you come and see understand and practice yourself if you think that this is the truth for you please accept it otherwise you can live freedom right so we have to practice that way questions so far please yeah. Okay. Um, so when, when, I, uh, when you read the suttas about the divine abodes and it comes to metta, karuna, and mudita, you define that as joy. Typically, it's translated sympathetic joy or optimism. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. But in, like in the other suttas in the Pali, like when they talk about pity, they, they translate that as joy. Yeah. So that, what's the, can you explain some more what the difference you're saying is between those two? That's I. I think yesterday, or before yesterday, I mentioned that when you attain the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, you have the first jhana, second jhana. That one is joy. That one is the first jhana joy, second jhana joy, right? And when you attain the base of infinite space, that one is called uplifted joy. Uplifted are more or stronger than the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana. You know? That one is the uplifted joy. It, it, when you say uplifted, yeah, is it, but it's like more, a more energetic joy? Yeah, more or stronger. Uh, more or stronger than, than first jhana joy. Got it? Okay, next one. Yeah. I seem to recall in another sutta the Buddha gave a fourth reason not to eat or you could you could mean <coughs> you could wrong. I could be wrong, but that you couldn't eat an animal that you killed yourself. Is that correct? Or have I misread that? You kill yourself? You kill yourself? That's correct. <coughs> no, no, an, an animal. Um, I thought there were four I thought there were four cases where you could or couldn't eat meat. 
One, obviously, um, if you can't see. No, three, three, three. three. If, you, if you see that somebody killed the animal for you, yeah. and you cannot accept that meat. Second one, you hear, and third one is suspect. And it's not a four, it's just like that three. No, no, three. Okay. Okay. Three. Okay. Yeah, this three. You suspect, oh, maybe that one that kills that, that living being for, you know, for me only. You should not accept that. See, uh, see here and suspect. This three. This, uh, this year I went to Bangladesh and somebody, uh, he's Muslim, but he really respect me. You know, so, and I, I, I was helping him a lot actually, and he and his wife decided to offer me the meat, and they want to kill the kitchen, chicken, chicken, chick, uh, chicken right? Chicken. Oh, sorry, <laughs> kitchen. Chicken, 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 and then Bhante, do you like the chicken? I said, why? Why are you asking that? Ah, oh, we want to offer the meat to you. They asked me, and I told him, sorry, I cannot, I cannot eat the chick, chicken, right? I cannot eat the chicken, because you said you will kill, and you offer the meat to me. Sorry, I cannot accept that. So he didn't bring, because they will kill for me. So I cannot give him the permission, right? He has said, not permissible. I didn't accept that. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I, it's, I understand that it's actually just a monk rule. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not really for all of us, which I, I kind of thought, well, I, I'm going to use that rule anyway. But no, for you five, five, five precept. Yeah, we, yeah. Just, we are precept. talking about the monks. So Buddha talking about here about the Buddhist monk. You know, because somebody blame Buddha and his disciple. So he's talking about the monks. Yeah. But for lay people, you know, you have only five precept. So for you, no problem. They only keep the five precept. But still, if you have the number one, you cannot kill the living beings. Right? That also you break up the precept. Right? Even for the even for the five precepts, there are three levels which will prevent us from Yes, one is bodily. Yeah, you cannot you verbally encourage that you have to criticize that. So which means the same rule would apply because you encourage that and you didn't criticize when you know they kill for you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> even though if it's okay, hey, Go and they bring that animal, yeah. number one. That also you, yeah. you have to demerit, you know? And then, okay, go and kill that animal. That also you commit offense. Even though you're a lay person. <coughs> this is unwholesome action. Yeah, but I don't think you would ever go, uh, I don't think you would ever say go kill that animal. The only, you would only suspect you mean for the lay people? Yeah, for the lay people. But if you say the wholesome and unwholesome, you know, that way everything is there. Right? I, I think the only, only way that it really applies to all of us is there are these fish restaurants. And they say, oh, do you want that fish? <laughs> and, and, or they come and say, you point the fish. And, and we say, yeah. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no fish. <laughs> Crabs, so, uh, yeah, lobster, for, lobster. For lay person, I, when I started taking press, I never should go there and point yeah. and, you know, I want a fish like that. When they treat me at dinner or something, I always say, don't care anything that's live. I don't eat anything that's alive. So, yeah. yeah, in Thailand, they brought me a, a bowl. I, I said I wanted the fish curry. They brought me a bowl with a fish 
live <laughs> flopping around in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I said, oh, no, no, I cannot eat that. So you can give me a green curry. Yeah, they, they do some, have you seen China, they even have the shrimps, the livey. They, you know, they put all the uh, jelly lipo, fish. Lipo yeah. into that. And, and, the, and the shrimp were jumpy. Yeah. It's okay. Vegan. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. In samsara, beings are born, reborn at different levels according to their karma. So in whatever level they're reborn in, their rupa changes, but the being is essentially the same, isn't it? I, I, my, my difficulty is when I look at an animal that I might want to eat, seeing the difference between them and a human. Right. I'm not looking down on that animal and saying this is lower than me and that it's worthy of being eaten. This is still a being, and so I don't want to eat that being. So I'm wondering how you feel the Buddha's attitude is about looking down on animals as lower than human. When we say may all living beings be happy and peaceful, that means you should love everyone all living beings that's why may all human beings be happy and peaceful you love all the human beings may all living beings be happy and peaceful calm free from suffering free from dangers free from difficulties that means you love all living beings that way you are practice really really practice in the right way loving kindness So, in Abhidhamma, actually, the long time I didn't study the Abhidhamma, I stopped, I stopped reading after coming here, you know. In Abhidhamma mention, Suti Sitta, that consciousness, Bhavanga Sitta, life continuum, and Patisandhi Sitta, rebirth consciousness. Three. Suti Siddha means dead consciousness. So in this human life, you did a lot of wholesome. Like here, ten days, I don't know whether you believe or not. I, I really believe it. You are gaining a lot of wholesome. You never break other precept. All the time you are practicing meditation. And people even who are offering one glass of water to you, to all of you, they gain a lot of merit. So, in this human life, you give the generosity, you keep the precept, and then you practice meditation. So before passing away, even a few seconds before passing away, you remember that in this human life, I did a lot of meditation. Like uh, today when I was talking with the Greek, he said, I did a lot of, I, I practiced many, many meditations different places. He, he has a lot of perfections. You know? So he came from Canada by motorcycle. <laughs> you see, for practicing meditation. And he is still as strong. He determined, I am going to Masuka for practicing meditation. You see? And I was very happy when I heard this, mo this afternoon. You know, he said, I practice different places. He really, ha he has a lot of perfection. You know, and he did a lot of merit. Some people, you know, who have, they have a lot of property, you know, they have everything. But even if you tell them, please meditate, please meditate. They never meditate. Okay, please come. 
the Masuka Meditation Center uh, for practicing, you know, you will not find even five people. But if you say, okay, we have the big ceremony, please come. You cannot get the place. <laughs> Pool. You see? So that's why, before, few seconds before, if you think that in this human life, I did a lot of wholesome action. Giving generosity, practice meditation, keep the precept, and then you passed away. You definitely reborn in heaven. You never reborn in hell, in demon, as a ghost. Never, ever. And when you attend the first jhana and you passed away, you reborn in Brahma world. So the dining hall, or there is this is over in the corner. There is one one shot over there in the corner. Yeah, could you see that? There are thirty one kinds of plane. First jhana, when you attend that, you passed away. You reborn there. Second jhana, you attend that. You know it. You passed away. You reborn there. Third jhana. You passed, you attain that, you, you passed away immediately that moment, you reborn there. Fourth jhana, you attain that, and immediately you passed away, you reborn there. The base of infinite space compassion, exactly the same. You attain that, and then very peacefully you passed away. You reborn the base of infinite space, that realm. We were talking with the jinn, jinn, right? Jane, you know, the, we are very sorry actually this m morning uh, her f uh, mom passed away and when I took the interview from her, you know, she explained me very clearly how, how did her mom passed away. Very peacefully she was watching television and then peacefully she gone. She never bothered anyone. Peacefully passed away. So that way we can think that she never harmed any people in the human life. She did all the time good actions. She helped a lot to the people. You know, I didn't see her, but this is what I'm thinking, you know. Maybe she knows. And whenever any people need any help, she tried to help them. So before passing away, the good sign arose in, his, in her mind. And then good deity said, hey, you should follow me. And then you should come to us. And she's watching televisions and the peacefully she passed away. And they reborn in the heaven. This is the good characteristic of the people. When someone passed away and they are scared, dog is coming to bite them, they are scared, you know. They passed away, definitely they reborn animal kingdom, you know. And if before passing, if you see beautiful sign, someone calling you, please come to the heaven because he or she almost going to die the deities will come and call you this is not like belief this is in the dhammapada said in dhammapada when you read there are many stories dhammapada so you'll find that before passing away they will exam you in this human life did you keep the precept? Yes. Did you give the generosity? Yes. Did you practice meditation? Yes. Please come. Then you passed away, you reborn in the heaven. There are six kinds of heaven, you can see that. And where you want to go. If you think that, you know, one of my friends from, from Chicago, his name is James. 
Sometimes he called me, you know. In the last year, he ordained here. His name was Buddhananda. I gave him. And who is the Buddhananda here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Buddhananda asked these same questions. <laughs> okay. He was sitting there. Sometimes he called me, you know. When he's a very good practitioner, actually, even though he's 40, 80, 40 years old right now, he's older than Bhante, Bhante we. He said, Bhante, you know, I don't want to reborn anymore. Okay, so, if so pra please practice meditation and attain Nibbana. Yeah, yeah, I want to get that, I want to get that, I want to, I don't want to reborn anymore. So if you think, I didn't want to go to heaven, I didn't want to go to the Brahma world, I didn't want to go to the Arupa state, I want to eradicate greed, hatred and delusion and eventually I will attain the highest peace, Nibbana. Yeah, you can try, who knows, if you have perfection, you may get it in this very life. Keep trying. You may get it. No matter what. You are now old, you are young, you know, you are middle aged, no problem. If you keep trying right now, from now, you will get it. Determine yourself. Next. My question was more relating to the difference between it's not okay to eat a human, but it is okay to eat an animal under some circumstances. So it was the difference between animal and humans. When I look at an animal, I don't see as much difference from a human. If I would not eat a human, I would not eat an animal because they're so much the same. So how could that? What the Buddha, I'm not clearly the, you know, the Buddha already explained because he was the psychic power and then even though if you attain the Arahanship, you also may have such a psychic power so you can see when you reflect to the animals, okay, that animals from the whose realm did he came here, then you can see that. He, may, he could be your, fr your family member, he could be your grandma, he could be your father, he could be or maybe your, your dad. So that's why Buddha said, number one, not to kill any living beings. If you kill the living beings, he could be your f father, he could be your mother, you know. Then he said, number one, abstention from killing. So, who are meditator, who are practice meditation, then never kill the living beings. Whatever people offer, yeah, go ahead. So, Bhante V did explain these types of meat. Um, uh, you can't eat tiger, you can't eat uh, bear, uh, because it, it gives you a smell. You know, if you're a monk in the forest, they'll attack you. They'll think, oh, another tiger. And you can't eat, eat human because does, you know, I mean, there's many legends of eating, uh, you know, other humans and that what it causes to your system. So there's reasons for those kinds of meat. Yeah. yeah. Not just they're low. The, you know, yeah, it, it, it doesn't mean they are low. Yeah, it's danger yeah. for the people. So that sense, the Buddha explained that. And once they're already dead, then they're not really a being at all. It's just form that we're eating. So that, that's why it's okay. To eat an animal because they're not a being anymore. Someone else improved the combat. Yeah. Okay, that's right. All right. Any more questions? No, right? Okay. Yes. How can we apply the teachings of dependent origination to overcome affliction and emotions? So there's emotions of the time that come up that afflict you, like uh, maybe ill will, maybe. Doubt, the most interesting. How can we apply the teachings of dependent origination to overcome those? 
overcome those what? I am not going to talk about the different you know, originations. <laughs> he said here, yeah. oh, the six years. Six years. He said, uh, six years. He is the six years. Oh, emotion. He said emotion, right? Yeah, yes, he is right, right effort, the six years. Yeah. As I mentioned this, this afternoon, you know, whatever any emotions or any negative thought rise in your mind, is the six years there. Yeah. You must use the six years until you attain Nibbana, Arahanship. You have to work very hard. But it doesn't mean that you practice hard. I use very hard means you continue your practice. Don't push too much, you know. As I said, this practice is like this, not like that. If you practice like this, <laughs> you'll get a strong headache. <laughs> Even two hours you cannot sit, you know. So how do you abandon your headache? Relaxing, relaxing. So that's why tomorrow I'm going to talk about the Sutta number 10 and in that Sutta Buddha explained Pasambaya, tranquilize. Tranquilize means relax. So when you take relaxed step, you really feel free. And how your meditation is progressing, you will understand yourself. Two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, you are sitting, you don't know how, because you are in deep meditation. Don't pay attention to the clock, okay, when you sit, determine from 1 o'clock to 5.30, uh, 1.30 to 5.30, one sitting four hours. When ring the bell for the uh, tea time, then you break other meditation. Otherwise, no. So that way <laughs> you can progress very well, right? Got it? I can ask question. I would add one more thing. <clears throat> to see everything in terms of dependent origination, you see it as impersonal. All of, you see all the piece, pieces that there's nobody there and there's no control. So, <coughs> and of course, that's how you really get to the, get to that point. But it's just seeing it's all a process and just observe. The reason I actually I don't want to teach the dependent originations, even though you are advanced level. Dependent origination is very deep, you know, and then especially there are some beginner, and if I teach them dependent originations, it will be very difficult to understand. So I always like the easy one. <laughs> very easy to attain Nibbana, not the dip difficult path. Okay, so that's why I choose the first first day, just orientations and basic instructions, and second day about the jhana, and today sutta also not so difficult. You know, there's a jivaka, it's like a story, and tomorrow I'll bring the sutta number ten, the for foundation of mindfulness. So we will not discuss about the repulsive, repulsiveness, bhavana, repulsiveness meditation. That means asuba bhavana. You know, and you bring in front of that body. You go to the cemetery in front of that body. You practice meditation. We are not practicing such meditation here. So we skip that part and then. We will talk the other things. So that way you will be more mindful, you know. And then later we will talk about the Kusambiya Sutta and how will you understand you attain the Sutta Panna or not. Right? <laughs> Rick is smiling. Okay. If no questions, we can share the merit right now. So you can see here, right? 
Oh, this is the sixth cell. This is the uh, the merit. Okay, let us share the merit together, please. May suffering once be suffering free, and the fear restrict fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting a space and earth, devils and nagas of mighty power, share in this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, I want to say one thing because there's the Jin mom passed away and then another one is the Dian, right? Dian. Daniel. 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 Uh, dad also. He's uh, his, his dead, right? Yeah. He's, his, his father. No, it's the father of Han Shan. Daniel Shan. Okay, this, for these two people, uh, we'll share the merit every day the last time because um, whatever we gain the merit uh, we are gaining merit here we should transfer to them at least by accepting our merit so that they can attain the nibbana in the okay so we'll do every afternoon so this is uh, we are thinking that you know